Object storage is a special type of storage designed to handle massive amounts of unstructured data. These are services like AWS S3, which is probably the most popular that you know. S3 is a simple storage service, which is used for storing large files and retrieving them quickly. Google Cloud also provides an object storage called Google Cloud Storage, and Azure have their own service called Azure Blob Storage. As you can see, it's also called Blob Storage in some services, which stands for Binary Large Object. But what is this object exactly? It's just a chunk of data, which could be an image, a video, or even an entire virtual machine. And each object comes with a few essential bits of information. The first one is the data, which is the actual binary content that you are storing. Next, it also contains unique identifier, which is the object's address within the storage system. And it also has some metadata, which is the information about this object, like file name, type, creation date, and so on. But why don't we use our database instead for storing these large files? Well, we still use our database to store the URI and reference and some more metadata about these images or video files. But the actual file is stored in the blob object storage. Because if you throw a bunch of huge files into your database, that will raise performance issue and our queries will become slower to execute. And what about file systems? Can we store these images and videos into some file storage like Google Drive or OneDrive? Or what about if we store them in the file system of our server and read it from there? Well, our server still has the same file system, and file systems are great for local storage and organization, but they don't scale as easily as object storages. This is because file systems have hierarchical structure, meaning they are structured like trees with folders, whereas object storage is flat and unstructured, which gives them the advantage of being highly scalable and fast for file retrievals. So does this mean that there are no folders in object storage? Well, many platforms like AWS S3 offer a folder-like experience by using delimiters in object names, meaning they split the path to object with forward slashes and represent them as folders. But this is still an illusion to make it easier to use, and technically there are no folders in object storage. And each object gets a unique identifier. For example, in S3 it's usually unique within the bucket and the specific storage service. However, since bucket names have to be unique across all AWS accounts, that means that your objects are essentially unique globally, not just inside your bucket. And how do we interact with these buckets? Well, usually with RESTful APIs. Most object stores offer RESTful API for interacting with objects. For instance, you can upload objects to S3 storage using POST request or by using AWS platform directly. And similarly, you can read your uploaded objects with a GET request or with AWS console. However, editing is typically done by replacing the entire object with a new version. So you first make a delete request to delete this object from the storage and then you make a new POST request to add the updated file. And in addition to this, there are many libraries and SDKs to make this process easier in different programming languages. So overall, object storages are designed for speed. They can quickly find objects based on their index or identifier. And they also provide distributed architecture, meaning they use multiple storage nodes for your API. And frequently accessed objects are also cached and stored in faster memory for even quicker retrieval. Many of these cloud-provided object storages also come with security. They use features like signed URLs and signed cookies to control access to your objects. And if you'd like to learn more about how that works, let me know in the comments and I'll make a dedicated video about signed URLs and cookies.